Okay. For people joining the live stream, we are talking about the design of some machine learning capabilities for Open Language. And uh, we're mostly talking about a function called Learn Distribution. And maybe we can get a demo. Amir, can you do a demo? Uh, yes, just one second. Okay. So do we have a new guide page that has information about this? Or do we have uh, a draft no. pages? No, we didn't do anything uh, documentation-wise. Uh, okay. yeah, I think it's a good time to start. I cannot okay. share a screen right now. But... Is this in a build that I can look at? Not yet. No. I... no, it's in a branch. It's on a branch. Steven, if you want to share, Amir can share. Oh, yeah, sorry. He, I didn't realize he was trying to... Okay, fine, go ahead. Okay, so uh, let's uh, take a look at the learn distribution first and uh, some derivative functions like missing imputation, which based on learn distribution. So uh, we have a few methods. And oh, yeah. no, let's just see it work. We, we don't yeah, need sure. to see the methods here. Yeah, sure. No, let's just see it work on MNIST, for example. Yeah. So uh, let's look at, the, for example, learn distribution on digits. And then uh, we can. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. We don't have to specify wait, the method. Wait, wait, wait. Show us digit zero there. Yes. And um, why is there an example? Okay. Just show us digits. No, no, just digits. Digits. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. So there's like a, a 3,000 sample from MNIST digits. Why uh, did you use example data rather than resource data there? Yes. But that Why is did you use fun. example data rather than resource data? Just no reason. I just. Okay, fine. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's fine. That, it would be better to use resource data. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. Yes. All right. Okay, so now. So then we can just give it the learn distribution, uh, the digits set of images, and then uh, we can have different methods. Yeah. Okay. Like fine. I don't. I don't care. What's the default method? Yeah. So the default there's, uh, no default methods, method. there's a automation. Yes. Uh, Etienne, what was that? Yeah. Yeah. It tries various methods. Yeah. So it tries various so try methods. It, run it yeah. right now. And, so uh, it would just yeah. You can see like that I said, the larger that I said. Yeah, you can, like yeah. you can get the learning curve, different algorithms that it tries, and it would find the best one. For example, here is also normal. Okay, all right. So yeah. let's see then the result of that. Yeah, and then uh, we can look at the. So let's do this. random variate. Let's do learn distribution. Okay, so LD random variate of LD. Yeah, we can do random variate. Variate of LD given the learn distribution and say like 10 of them. So it's a little bit fuzzy, but say there are better, like let's look at another method, uh, say kernel density estimation. That needs autocompletes, by the way. Yes, yes. And uh, just. So I understand that learning curve. Why are there these big? Are those error bars? They are error bars, yes. Yes, so like, and so then that looked like, like it, that looked like it hadn't done very well. And okay, that's cool, but that learn distribution thing, the um, the training thing, didn't look very promising. There, I mean, that is, it seemed to be, um, it seemed to still have a very high error. Yeah, it's just that they didn't test on lots of uh, data that was always a big error bars. Can we see that again, please? Just, just yes, sure. do information, do information. Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, just, what, what's the vertical look? scale there? It has like 50,000 or something on the vertical scale. Yeah, it's true. It didn't show well. I think it's minus something, some big number. Yeah, yeah. there's like, yeah, there's like a normalization problem that we will fix it. Okay, so fine. Do information, I mean. Yeah, and then we can do information, information on that. Information and, uh, on LD. On the, uh, yes, yeah. on LD. And then you can, you know. Like number of examples. Look at the, at the loss. So indeed the loss is like minus 5, 10 to 4, but for some reason it didn't show up. 
on the left of the graph. We have to fix that. Well, there's a minus sign missing. But I mean, I don't understand what it means to have a negative loss like that. Well, it doesn't mean much when you learn distribution. Um, I mean, it's in the... Okay, okay. What we have to document and what it means is that we take... In the case of images, we are conforming them. And then uh, the, the, the PDF reported is in this multidimensional space that is the space of the, of the pixels. Uh, just like a, each image is a tensor uh, after conformation of the image. That, that's, that's the space in which we define distribution. Uh, yeah, if you put images that are different sizes, we won't try to capture the distribution of sizes as well. Okay. Um, that's, that's, that's one thing to... Okay, but I think we should normalize these things in a more sensible way. Uh, you're right. Actually, actually, we should divide that by the number of variables. Yeah, which is the number so, of pixels times three or yep, something like that. Yep. So it would be something divided by about 1,000 in that case. So it would be like a minus 50. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, All right, so, the, so the random variant is magnificent. Now let's see some other things. Like, let's see, can we see the mean of that distribution? So you cannot do the mean because, okay, in that case, it's numerical distribution. So there exists a mean. But in many cases, the mean doesn't even exist. Uh, categorical. In the space, even. for example, categorical, yeah. So that's why we didn't implement uh, mean. We could, sorry, we could have mean for some specific, in the case where the input is numeric, for it to do mean, that would be something we could add. This is numeric because the pixel values, I mean, fundamentally, a yes. mean here will be some gray blob or something. Yes, yes. Actually, you can do a random variate. Uh, yeah, just do a mean on this random variate and put 1,000 and... and yeah, just say mean of that. Go ahead, say mean of the random variate. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so like, well, if, if you put a lot, that's... Uh, yeah, okay. It's like a mean of all images, kind yeah, of. right. Okay, so what other functions can... Uh, this learned distribution, what other things can I do with the learned distribution? Yeah. Can I... Can yeah, I like for example, it? can I say x tilde tilde learn distribution? Could I say expectation value of something with x tilde, you know, x distributed like the learn distribution? Um, Don't have it right now. Would that make any sense? I mean, like, like for example, if I said, yeah, uh, yeah, it would, it would. Okay. I mean, as long as your function evaluates a numerical value. Uh, which is also the case in the current way. Well, why would it have to be the function? I mean, the, the trivial thing I could say Not is something PDF. like show me the, um, uh, you know, show me the, the um, I don't know, the, the edge detection of this thing with X distributed. I don't know what that means, anything. You know, edge detection of a distribution with X, edge detection of X, edge detect of X with X distributed according to this learnt distribution. Would that mean something or not? I'm not sure. Okay, like, but like what other functions are supported for learn distributions? So it's a missing imputation. I mean, yes. When you have a learn distribution, the only thing you can do is run and variate, query the PDF, and okay. uh, currently so let's see the PDF. Let's, 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 let's if you want to sort of integrate that level of integration with expectation and probability and so on, we're going to have to do separate work because that's going to be primarily simulation oriented, uh, you know, methods. To compute those things well but what makes sense i mean in other words so let me give you an example okay let, let me see the so you can do that for graphs for instance okay for graph distributions you can compute you know expected connectivity length and things like that can i see that pdf please could you evaluate it please okay that is absolutely meaningless garbage what the heck does it mean it's meaningless well, garbage it's, uh, well yeah but it's a space in 728 dimensions so it's like delta. These are delta Dirac functions in a very I mean, large. Oh, but yeah, yeah. No, but okay, okay. You did something. This is digits in the training data. So that's not the thing to look at. We have to look at the digits uh, that were not in the training set. Yeah. Because otherwise, yeah. this is this is a kernel density estimation, so it's a bit of a nearest neighbor. So it might be a bit picked around the test data. So. Uh, yeah, resource data is much faster. Huh? Yeah. yeah. No, that's uh, still meaningless. 
That's that, not what I expect to see. I expect to see something. I, I don't think it's meaningless. I think that these are, you know, with density estimation, these are almost like smooth versions of Dirac's. Yes, that's yeah, correct. These are but, 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 but why they shouldn't be Dirac's because they're not on, you know, they're not on the point, right? These are off the point. No, it's, it's true. They are. Can you, do, can you do the log of this and then minus just to see if we are in the yeah. minus 50,000 as shown by the learning curve? And okay, so they are actually correct. They are completely correct. Uh, so, uh, this valid digit. If you put a random image, you need something much worse. So right, well, let's try it, try it, try it. Just try it, just try it. Yeah, sure, sure. Try sure. random image there. Yeah. Uh, so it's just that the space has well, 720 dimensions, and so you have something... Uh, log of that. Uh, yeah, log of that. I'm totally confused um, here. I'm sorry. But explain to me what the heck's going on. The, the integral over, over all space for the probability is yeah. for the PDF is 1, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so how come there are things that have, you know, you're, you're saying that the whole space is really, really big. What's that? Yes, exactly. The space is very, really big. Each dimension is a pixel value between zero and one. So, uh, actually, yeah, but why is even the random image that big? I mean, if 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 you just have a the, the random image shouldn't be that big because look, there's got to be a lot of the space that has nothing in it, where it's completely barren, where there's no possible values. And I would have thought that a random image. Prize as well. The random age. Yeah, let's there. see the random image. Could you just show sure. us the random image, please? Yes, sure. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand how that random image is anywhere I mean, close to. It's lower than the others. I mean, when you say close, you have to say that it's a log PDF, right? No, so I, I, why two, is there? Why is there a log? I mean, so the, nice PDF, the integral it. of the PDF better be equal to one, which means for most possible random images, the support there of the distribution of the PDF should be zero for all practical purposes. That's true. Okay, uh, so show me a place in the PDF where we're getting zero. That's I'm surprised by that. Can you look with the multinormal here? Um, yeah, I yeah, let me, uh, yeah let, it's so. Actually, the strange, automatic actually. the automatic automation shows yeah. much more. Um, yeah, and, let's, uh, yeah, let's use. Just, just don't 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 specify anything. We should let yeah, yeah just let it be done automatically. Do what what it does, and uh, it actually picked multinormal before, but then because it didn't look nice sample, uh, Amir put the, the kernel density. So do you want me to also use more data or? No, 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 it's, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. The exact sure. thing you've got here. But, but I want to see whether this PDF, I don't believe this PDF right now. Let me give you an application of the PDF, okay? Which is this originality measure thing that I was looking at. In other words, how unexpected is, you know, you draw a digit, how unexpected and original is that digit? That's a bit what I'm mean, fiction is. Yes. Yeah, so let's... Can you call it differently? Like digit test, for example? Yeah, like from... Like, 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 what, yeah, 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 sure. Just, go, just go, The just training go. and test were the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. So we need to have that different. Yeah. Then... Sorry, I mean, I should have tell you that you should prepare for a presentation. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I was <laughs> not... I'm sorry, I was not prepared. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. So let's look at this. Those are huge. It's Oracle again. <sighs> yeah, Try it again. That's, uh, yeah. I think there's a bug here. Do log PDF. Do log PDF. Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's. Because that's it. so. That's a. That's a undocumented uh, one. Hmm, that's strange. That is a strange. It very strange. Was. This one normally works very well. Yeah, it used to work, but. Okay. Okay, so what we expect, let me just understand a few things. So CDF makes absolutely no sense for these multidimensional distributions. Is no. that a correct statement? Yes. So Roger, poke at some things here from your statistics, functionality, and probability distributions that you think might be relevant. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. 
Well, Etienne and I have discussed some, so if you are ready to go, Etienne, why don't you start? Yeah, I was saying, we, we already discussed about that. Also with Steven, um, there's some nice things with mutual information uh, yes. that we could have. Uh, and it will be kind of an extension of correlation, like correlation you can give two sets of data at the moment, but they have to be numerical. Uh, so even if they, have numer they are numerical, it will give you know, something a bit better than just a linear correlation. And potentially we can put any type, I mean, more type of data. So what about things like entropies of distributions? Does that make sense for these? Yes, yes, yes. Can, 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 we, well. can we pull up, we can go back to my screen. Why don't we go back to my screen for a second? Actually, we, we can so, so entropy, right? entropy is not a standard property that we support for distributions. I mean, but if this team adds these extensions, there's a lot of legacy stuff to also support in that case. Or it's something just for this. Yeah, and this time. So, uh, what should we be looking at here? We, we should be looking at um, what I want to see is, uh, okay, so, so estimated distribution. I'm trying to understand the difference between estimated distribution and learned distribution and so on. And data distribution. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the, the non-parametric distributions have built-in estimators when you give it data and they just direct, you know, like histogram distribution or smooth histogram distribution. They auto-estimate. auto, auto uh, estimate. I understand. So here you're saying estimated distribution given some parameters in the gamma distribution. You're saying what's the best gamma distribution for this data? That's right. Okay. Whereas for data distribution... If you go to smooth histogram or, you know, yeah, do you see them, a bunch of them there? See, that, these ones take data in, and what you get back is the distributional representation of that. Fine. That's basically what learned distribution is doing, right? Yes. Yes. In the, with the method kernel density estimation, yes. Well, this, so smooth kernel distribution. So my next question is, if I give smooth kernel distribution a bunch of pictures of cats, no, what is it going to do? No, it's not going to do anything. I, I know it's not right now going to do anything, but I'm asking, should it, in fact, call the learn distribution code with method arrow smooth kernel estimation? The difference is that these guys do support the full complement of properties for distributions, whereas learn distribution does not at all. No, I, I understand that. I understand that. But... So when you get a smooth kernel distribution out here, yeah. Well, what's this going to do? I don't. I, I just like thirty-five of these properties. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Why did you hide the? Why did you hide the output there? Seems like it's useful to see what that is. But anyway, never mind. Okay. So there's a there's a. Okay. So there's this thing called data distribution. I think that the point of that example was not that. The point was to show that there is an actual PDF and CDF. Yeah. God, I wish we didn't do this of, of combining these things. But anyway, never mind that. It's not an issue. Okay. It takes smaller, X, um, you know, her, the vertical height. Yeah, I know. Okay. In any case, be that as it may, the... Um, Okay, so what I'm trying to understand the comparison here between data distribution and learn distribution, okay, which I think has the wrong name. Okay, I, I think a huge thing is that there's a lot of work there going on for um, to dealing with extreme. You know, first of all, the all the encoding framework to map things to quantitative things, whether it's categorical or no, I know or if it's high dimensional to reduce the dimension. There's a lot of work. I, I realize that, but from the point of view of what we're getting out, I think what we're getting out is a data distribution with a type that says, you know, machine learned, whatever it is, thing. But basically, it's a data distribution. Sort of, but it comes with a bunch of other things, which are all these, um, you know, to, to account for the time taken to, to train and fit, you know, the animations of... Of the I understand design. all of that. I, I, I understand. But from the point of view of functionality, the thing we get at the end is functionally equivalent to a data distribution, except that certain properties like moments and things 
don't exist for it. We don't know how to compute those. Right. Because why is that? Well, the reason for that is it's not a one-dimensional distribution. It's a 715-dimensional distribution or something. And so yeah. quantiles don't but make that, sense. No, no, quantile doesn't. But mean word if it's numerical. You know, well, if there's a way to combine it, which there is for images. If, well, yeah. Look, if it's a distribution over words, for example, mean makes no sense. Exactly. Which is right. the oracle, right? Of a sort. I think words are even something yet different. I mean, categorical, as far as I'm concerned, is there are seven choices, you know, here's what they are. That's the categorical distribution that has that has a limited set of choices and certain probabilities for those choices. Right. And, you know, that's what we need to be able to support. And that's sort of the minimal, that's simpler than almost everything we have here. And, right. and we should figure out how to support it. But that's a separate issue. It is a separate issue because there's a lot of things they, they will not support. And there's some other things that you want in addition. So it's a little bit of both. Well, okay, fair enough. But I mean, things like, obviously, mean doesn't make sense for a categorical distribution. But uh, and neither does expectation for the same reason. Right. But okay, so let's just take a look for a second. Where, where do we have the list of, of functions that are supported for distribution? All right. I think I just understood why the numbers were that crazy. Yes. And, uh, and that relates to something we should probably talk about. So mm -hmm. if you look at MNIST, uh, yep. there's some pixels that are basically always one value, zero, 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 zero. So if you actually want to compute a distribution in the space of all pixels, it's actually infinity because you have some basically, I don't know, Dirac, so to speak, for some features that are always the same, if you see what I mean. And it's a D-rock with a width of zero because the standard deviation is zero in those spaces. Yeah. So that causes so, this. And I just before, when, like the typical thing in, in uh, pre-processing, if it was saying something that was only zero, it would just assume there's a standard deviation of one. Uh, I just changed that, and, and I realized that's probably these are creating problems. Um, okay, hold on. Let me understand. So, Let's say we had a two-dimensional distribution. I think, I think I have an easy explanation, Stephen. Yep. So you can think of even a one-dimensional distribution. Mm -hmm. Now, you can have what's called a mixed type of distribution. It's both discrete and continuous. Mm -hmm. If you want to think of it as a physicist, you might think of these as in the PDF as Dirac spikes. Or if you look at the CDF, there there are jump discontinuities in the CDF. Fine, it's like a, it's like something with a, both a continuous part to its spectrum and a discrete part to its spectrum. Exactly. Okay. So, and these are hard to handle because if you query the PDF, it would be normally it should actually be infinity. Where? Mm, well, uh, you know, for Dirac, it's it's it would be an undefined value effectively. You know, it's yes. Or if you, uh, or let's say, yeah, you put uh, one, I mean, you were going towards a 2D example. So if you have a 2D distribution when everything is exactly on the line, uh, then it's PDF in the two-dimensional space will be undefined in all the values. On that line, yeah. On that line. And zero every, everywhere else. And um, that's that's a bit of a problem. And so... Okay, there's one thing to realize that the, the PDF, the actual value of the PDF is not that meaningful in that setting in, in, for this function. Usually what we want to know is, is a, you know, a variant of the PDF uh, is lower for an example to another example to know if it's anomalous or we might want to climb the PDF in order to denoise or, or to impute missing values to select the region with the highest PDF. Uh, so you're saying only the comparative PDF, PDF is relevant. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And and um, so we're taking some liberty to smooth the data. So for example, in, in uh, MNIST, you have these pixels that are always one or always zero. Uh, the, the automatic preprocessing uh, will will add a little bit of noise to, to, to smooth these things. And I realized in my last commit, I just completely removed noise up to... Um, min, min machine number or something like this. And that's what's creating this craziness. And that's what's creating in multinormal this um, 
because it, it uses arbitrary precision, but even with arbitrary precision, I think it's out of uh, out of range uh, or, or something like this. That's what creates a precision problem, basically. Um, so I need to to rethink that. It also poses the question about: Is it that meaningful to ask for the, the PDF for this sort of stuff? Not uh, terribly. Uh, that's why at some point we, we thought of having log PDF instead. Uh, uh, what about okay. likelihood? I have to go, Stephen. Okay, okay. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Um, we may not be able to continue meaningfully without Etienne here. Um, I, I think we shouldn't. I think it's it's a much more productive with Etienne here. It's just okay. But but let's just parameterize what it is we're trying to understand. I mean, we're we're trying to figure out. And Roger, let me just address this with you for a second, okay? So the fundamental point is we've got this way of deriving a distribution that seems to me very much like the data distribution idea. Yeah, right. it is. Okay, so... But with, with, with important additions, you know, with all, all the encoders and dimension reductions. And... Right. Well, so... Yes, that there are many processing processors that are involved. Yeah, I, I get it. I know it's much more complicated, but it's the same idea as, you know, estimated distribution, but with sort of a machine learned. It's something in between. Uh, you know, the result is really a data distribution, right. except with more complicated tentacles there. Right. Um. So in that sense, yes, it is the same idea. Okay. So to me, the feeder should be some function that is some kind of, um, you know, we shouldn't have a separate thing called learn distribution. It should be data distribution is the output. No, no, data distribution is just a container. It's There's no, oh, you mean the output should be that? Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. Oh, I see. Um, but then, you know, the, the, the set of properties and other things, you know, we're going to have to conform those. That's, they're not going to be the same. Some of them. I mean, uh, look, it can say, this is a data distribution. I'm sorry, it's a, it's a you know, 7,000 dimensional distribution over things that don't make any sense to compute quantiles for. We, we, should, we should have that discussion with Etienne here, because I, I don't know how easy that's going to be. Because, you know, think about it, you know, it's easy to overload. But documentation is hard to overload because you're effectively writing two sets of documentation there. Yeah, I understand. Page. I understand. So so let's take a look, for example, here at data distribution. Yeah, I mean, this says practically nothing. Right. Which is good for our purposes. So this is saying there are things that that feed into this, like empirical distribution. Right. Um, and conceivably, we could have a thing called learned distribution or something right. that, that could feed into data distribution. So instead of empirical distribution, it's called learned distribution. And then its output is a data distribution. Right. It, it could be, but I think, yes. Okay. But we, we need to have that discussion in detail with Etienne because they've gone on to, to sort of do their own thing looking at this, but, but we got to sort of, the devil is in the details, I think. All right. Okay, fine. Um, all right. Well, uh, so much for that. Um, all right, let's, um, we should wrap up. Uh, Roger, you and I have a meeting coming up very soon, which is also going to be live streamed. So we could actually, if we have a chance, maybe we can try and move that meeting up by a few minutes. Um, actually, you know what? No, it's fine. Let's not do that. I've got something else I need to take care of. So I will see you at the top of the next hour um, at the other meeting. Sounds good. And uh, uh, thanks all. See you later.